Hey everybody, Tyler Florence here. Welcome to the Wolf of Down Test Kitchen. We're here with Matt Massera, or Corporate Chef. What's up? The weather's starting to change. We're starting to talk about fall flavors. And now is a really good time to start talking about cooking with beer. And we want to extend a, a really warm thank you to our good friends at New Belgian for sending us an amazing beer to cook with this week. Boom, kids! We're talking about Triple, which is an absolutely delicious Belgian-style ale, and you love it. You're a big fan too, right? I do. I do. I, I love it. I think um, those like Abbey-style ales, those monastery kind of styles, are really, really good. They're super interesting. Great fall flavors out of them. I think it's like almost an ultimate beer for food. Exactly, uh, <laughs> especially this time of year, right? Yeah, because absolutely. like during the summer, we want really, really light, clean beers. But once we start moving to the fall, we're talking about richer flavors, uh, more heartier dishes, bigger, bolder flavor profiles, lots of savory and sweet combinations going on. So we got a bunch of beer here in the test kitchen today. And what Matt and I are gonna do is crack open one of these things, identify the flavor profile, and then we're just gonna riff and start cooking in the kitchen today and see what we come up with. I'm super excited about this. Matt, do we not have the best job in the world or what? It doesn't suck. It doesn't suck. It's gonna be so much fun. Welcome to Wolf It Down. All right, brother, cheers. Cheers. Boom. Hmm. That is so incredibly satisfying. Wow. That's delicious. I'm going to chew on that. Nice floral notes out of this. I think it's really great. I'm getting kind of like a ripe banana note. Yeah, definitely banana. It's yeah. very common in mm. like those kind of Belgian ales. Color's great, aroma's great. Apricotty, figgy, caramely kind of stuff going on in there. It's really, really yummy. It's going to be so much fun to pair food with. Absolutely. Okay, so let's start working on a menu today, man. So I'm thinking like pork schnitzel, sweet and sour cabbage. I think that'd be really nice with yeah, that. Like, like, a red butter, like a butter braise type of thing. Sounds really, really good. And yeah. I think we can add some of that beer to the cabbage too, which would be awesome. 100%, awful. yeah. And then the blue cheese, you want to do that with the potatoes? That sounds great. So we'll just like do like a little small marble potatoes, boil them, smash Almost them. Almost like a simple potato salad, but not so Americana. Exactly. And then we got to make applesauce with the pork, right? Duh. <laughs> Duh. Okay, so we got a really good menu. This is gonna be so much fun, man. Let's get cooking. The first thing we're gonna work on is almost like a German potato salad with sour cream, blue cheese, chive, right? I think it'll totally. be awesome. A little red wine vinegar, give it a little acid. Boom. We're gonna take the potatoes, throw them in a little bit of salted water. They should cook in about eight to 10 minutes. All right, so I think apples and pork are a delicious combination. We're gonna make a roasted apple sauce, almost a roasted apple puree, savory sweet. I think it's gonna be really, really nice. What we're gonna do is just cut the cheeks of the apples off. Then we're gonna to top it with brown sugar, cinnamon, coriander, salt, a little olive oil, make a slurry out of all that. Then pop it into the oven. So what we have here is one head of cabbage, one head of red cabbage that we're gonna cut into like julienne threads. That's you know, gonna cook down and get really, really nice and tender because we're adding a little bit of cider vinegar to that, a little bit of honey, whole grain mustard, and butter, and let that get really, really nice and rich. And then we're gonna add New Belgian triple. Pull all those flavors together. This is a great side dish. All right, so the potatoes are finished and they are so incredibly tender. You can just break them apart with the back of a spoon and that's exactly what we're gonna do, right? So I'm gonna smash these potatoes, fold in some chives, a little bit of red wine vinegar. Then we're gonna make an amazing dressing out of blue cheese and sour cream, whole grain mustard. It's gonna be delicious. Mmm, that and that all day. Is that nice? <laughs> just to make sure. Yep, right on track. Whoa. Whoa. Good, huh? Delicious, yeah. Nice combo. Great. So we got the apples in the oven. Cabbage is cooking. Potatoes are done. Let's start working on our schnitzel. All right, so we've got our protein board here, and we have plastic wrap laid over a couple different layers so we have a base sheet. And then what we're going to do is just add a little bit of olive oil to this just so our pork, once we start to pound it out, will slide nice and evenly and smooth. And then we're gonna take all four of our boneless pork chops. We're gonna lay it on top of this. One more top sheet of plastic. All right, so we're gonna take our mallet, not the rigid side, because that's gonna tear holes in it too much, but we're gonna take our flat side with nice even pressure, pound this out until we get consistent size boneless pork cutlets about the size of my hand, and that's gonna be perfect for the plate coverage and it's gonna look awesome. All right, so now we've got our pork cutlets pounded out. Let's jump into a breading station, and we're gonna take this from pork cutlets into pork schnitzel. First things first, it's gonna be flour, 
which is gonna be the first dry, into the wet, which is gonna be eggs, and then into this panko crumb. Now, I think we're in official schnitzel territory. Yeah, we're in schnitzel town now. All right, so now we got our pork ready. We're gonna throw this into the fridge uncovered because I also think it's a nice pro tip just to let the crust dry out a little bit before you start to pan fry them. But let's check in on the apples and also let's show you how beautiful that cabbage turned out. Okay, so we've got our apples, right? Now, I like making savory apple purees for dishes, leaving the skin on. And I think this is such a great tip because this is gonna turn vibrant and have a really, really beautiful color. Again, it's gonna match like the color tones of fall, right? So we're gonna put this into the blender, puree it at high speed so it is baby food smooth. This is gonna be a delicious accompaniment with that super crispy pork schnitzel. That's beautiful. I think lovely? it's good, right? I think it's absolutely delicious, yeah. right? It's gonna match up with the beer beautifully. All right, let's talk about that cabbage. Ta-da! This is New Belgium sweet and sour braised cabbage. The vibrant color is from the apple cider vinegar that we added, nice and bright and sharp from the whole grain mustard. Beautiful. All right, so we'll give this a little taste to make sure our seasoning's on point here. Oh, that's so good. Mm, I miss that. Isn't that great? I'm like an old friend. Mm. What's up, Paul? Winter is coming. Boom, man. So we got all of our side dishes and sauces banged out. Those beautiful blue cheese potatoes. We got the cabbage banged out. We got our gorgeous apple puree. Now let's start pan frying those pork schnitzel cutlets. All right, so when it comes to pan frying, specifically big cuts like this, the most important thing is to don't overcrowd your pan, right? So we're gonna cook these one at a time. This will take about 15 minutes. So we got a nice big stainless steel saute pan and we're gonna add a decent amount of olive oil, right? We're gonna shallow fry these until they're nice and crispy and golden brown. It should take about, I would say two and a half to three minutes per side. So for the most part, these are gonna cook quick. Once they're finished, we're gonna stack them up onto a sheet pan and then we can flash all of them at the same time right before we serve. So they're all nice and hot and perfectly crisp, golden brown. Yeah. And they're gonna be great. All right, so we've got all of our elements banged out for what I think is gonna be an awesome dish. It's gonna match up uh, with our new Belgian L beautifully, right? So we got a plate, and now let's just kind of piece this whole thing together. We're gonna make a masterpiece. So we're gonna take some of our roasted apple puree. We're just gonna drop this right in the front, okay? Nice, big, pretty, beautiful smear, bang. Then we're gonna take our pork schnitzel, drop this right in the front so it kisses the puree just a little bit. Then we're gonna take our new potatoes, our beautiful, Little small marble potatoes tossed with blue cheese, sour cream, fresh chives. It's gonna match beautifully with the beer too, right? Last but not least, we've got our cabbage, which is nice and tangy and sweet. Tossed in with this new Belgium ale. Come on, man, isn't that just gorgeous? Now, as far as herbs go, I think dill matches up with all this stuff absolutely beautifully, right? So we're gonna take some fresh dill, give it a nice little scatter, I think we got something really, really nice here, gang. So we want to thank the folks from New Belgium for hanging out with us today. Absolutely. Right? And thanks so much for sending us this triple. It is so incredibly delicious. We got our new Belgium ale, right? And we've got our pork schnitzel with a roasted apple puree, those blue cheese potatoes, and our sweet and tangy cabbage, right? Let's see how we did. Oh, my God. Mm. Ooh, the test. Ooh, that's so good. Oh, it works so great with everything. The flavor of the schnitzel doesn't wash it out. No. Nope. It pairs perfectly. I love it. It's so delicious. Guys, thank you so much for watching Wolf of Down this week. And thank you so much, New Belgium, for hanging out with us and sponsoring this particular video. Great dish. Get all the recipes at wolfofdown.com. And we'll see you guys next week. Thanks so much. Cheers. Cheers, everybody. Boom. How much fun is this?